this laboratory technical update will revolve around uh, partial dentures. Partial dentures have, have changed uh, dramatically in the past 15 years, uh, but especially in the last couple of years with uh, what's called selective laser melting, uh, how we make these partial frames. Put this kind of funny, uh, funny picture on here because uh, partial frames for the modern dental laboratory are, are a monster. And um, but there was a period maybe three years ago, four years ago, where at least 40% of our partials, when they were cast, uh, were rejected for miscast or misfits, um, just just errors. There's a, there was a whole um, generation of technicians who were who were great at casting, waxing, casting, investing, sprueing, desprueing, all that. And that that's a, that's kind of an art that's just becoming lost. Uh, they probably still teach it in the few remaining dental uh, technology institutions, but for the most part, it's laboratories who do their own training, and training now is uh, digital. So when when we when we had this problem, um, uh, you can imagine if 40 out of 100 partials were remade internally, uh, there were also external issues too. So that was a real uh, real difficult challenge for our laboratory for for the longest time for years. In fact, um, casting, you know, this is what a casting looks like when it's done traditionally. You know, somebody, somebody, some technician has to go and take this case and grind off all of the, um, uh, all of that surface carbon, all of the surface material, try to smooth it. I mean, just look at the inside of this clasp and underneath this rest seat and just imagine taking uh, a burr. Or, or any kind of grinding or, or tool and try to make that ideal to fit that crown. I mean, it's almost, I mean, it's obviously not impossible. We did it for decades, but uh, but that's what a, a partial looks like when it comes out of investment. And so you compare that with what we're doing today with SLM technology, it's selective laser melting. We'll go through a little bit of the process of how that works, but compare those two. All right, traditional with, with this. So this is how it comes out of the, uh, the bath of lasered particles. And it's, uh, it's the inside of it barely needs to be adjusted. It just needs to be smoothed a little bit and polished. And there's uh, actually equipment that does that. Uh, we have a, a very expensive, I don't know, it's hundred and hundred and some thousand dollar piece of equipment that does essentially what a Valmon's machine used to do, which is it's a vat of basically ceramic beads and the machine, I have a little video of it coming up, but the machine basically massages the metal instead of adjusting it. And so it just smooths out the surface, but doesn't remove anything. And that that's what really um, adds to the, uh, the efficiencies, of, I mean, the accuracies of it. So with a typical case, uh, we've, been, we've been using digital technology for maybe 15 years, where we digitally design all of our partials, 100% of them. But historically, what we've done is, I hit pause on that. Historically, what we've done is design the partial digitally uh, with, a, with a software. We've been through about four different softwares, uh, but they all do the same type of basic thing, and that is they survey the model. They allow you to adjust. It's kind of, it's computer-aided design, so you rotate the partial digitally until you I idealize the path of insertion. So instead of using a traditional nay surveyor and um, you know older technology that worked, we do it digitally. So as you manually oscillate the model, the software will tell you essentially where to stop so that the undercuts are indicated. And then you can design your partial with a, with a perfect draw, perfect path of occlusion. So we did that for years and we would print it in um, wax for a while, which was a challenge, trying to trying to print wax and then cast it, and then we started printing resins. But resin, cross arch resin, and resin that um, extends out from the palate to the clasps and the rest seats and so forth, had a tendency to shrink and warp during the printing process. Uh, so we would cast it, and then and then of course the casting would come out and it would have problems. And it was uh, 
it was a perfect digital file and then sometimes a perfect uh, printed file and then the ca the traditional casting is what um, you know messed up the uh, the process so when they invented this SLM technology then it was a true digital to digital so the file would go into a software after we designed it go into a software and it would get nested on this platform and then this laser would essentially hit the surface of this vat of chrome cobalt particles and it would design a platform and then a partial and so the the platform would slowly sink and so the next layer of particles get zapped by the laser and then incrementally uh, at the you know micron level a partial gets designed or it gets uh, gets built and that and that is a true one-to-one -one. so what we design is literally what we get when we print these partials and this is what the plate looks like right here so all these partials are lined up on the plate um, they're all perfectly supported with these little struts underneath each part of the partial there is no expansion uh, there's no warping there's no uh, heat hot and cold elements of it that you, all the elements that you have with traditional casting and then once it's finished it essentially goes into this machine so, so this machine has eight little clasps on it and you you bolt you basically screw in a partial on these eight little uh, these eight, eight little arms and this thing just goes around in a circle for an hour or so and it polishes the partial until it's just about as smooth as can be so this is how they go in uh, with a little bit of human adjustment on these before they go in the vat and then when they come out they're just just perfect and so you can imagine that uh, going from a 40% internal remake down to nearly zero. It's really rare when a, when a partial comes out of this machine and it doesn't fit perfectly to the model. Sometimes you have to do a little bit of adjustment, but uh, investing in this expensive technology was totally worth it, you know, to, um, to have this kind of accuracy. So, for the most part, uh, laboratories in America, if they've adopted this technology, they're printing. There is, um, you know, since this is a technical update, there are methods of milling uh, uh, frames from chrome cobalt. So this is a, a plate of solid chrome cobalt that goes into a milling machine. And then uh, just you, the, the machine uses a burr and it basically grinds out a partial denture. Now, h historically, I mean, we've been involved in uh, printing and milling for, uh, you know, for years and years and years. And the milling is usually the least efficient there's burr costs, you know, you have to replace all the burrs. Um, these machines are very expensive and you can only make, you know, seven or eight at a time. That's all that's available on the build plate. So uh, economically, it's not feasible to, to mill these out. Um, I'm told they're developing new mills. Uh, they're going to be more efficient, but you're still grinding on chrome cobalt and there's just a huge cost, you know, involved in doing that. Most partials that we make are still on traditional stone casts uh there's st the the impressions of the cast come in we scan them we turn them into an stl file pull them into the software and then design the partial frame uh, with a two setup we do both at the same time uh, but we have a lot of doctors obviously with uh, digital impressions and if you can scan like in this case if you can scan a palette perfectly and you can scan a full arch with your scanner then we can make a partial frame uh, we have quite a bit of experience uh, with this at this point and, uh, you know, and very good success. You know, one issue is the, the models. Uh, when we make the partial frame, we can send it out on the resin model. But when the partial comes back and we have to set teeth and then process acrylic to it, uh, this model has to be duplicated in stone. So there's always a little bit of an extra cost um, in the stone. Uh, but still, you have the opportunity to use a digital impression for partial dentures so that's uh that's the program on on partial dentures um anybody have any questions on this technology